irreversible dimensional changes will result either in the expansion of the material or shrinkage in the material. We will see the first example where the material shrinks. Example magnesite bricks. When magnesite bricks are heated, they undergo a change thereby the volume gets reduced or the material shrinks. This material which is amorphous in nature becomes crystalline. As a result of this, the volume reduces and also the specific gravity increases. The magnesite has a specific gravity of 3.05 whereas uh, the crystalline form which is known as periclass is having specific gravity 3.54 which clearly shows there is a reduction in the volume. The second example is silica bricks. When silica bricks are subjected to heat for a prolonged time, they undergo expansion in volume. For example, this quartz is highly crystalline in nature. When it is heated at 870 degrees centigrade over a prolonged period of time, it gets converted to tridimite. And this on further heating at the same temperature gets converted to another form which is known as the beta form or the cristobalite. So, there is an expansion of volume. Next, we will see the general methods of manufacturing refractories. The general uh, methods involve various steps. The first step is grinding. And if you want to prepare a refractory, the raw materials are taken, they are crushed and ground to a fine powder using pulverizers or some other type of uh, machines and so you get a, a very fine powder. The second step involves mixing of the raw materials. The property of the refractory depends upon the raw materials from which it is prepared. So, to alter the properties, suitably two or more materials are mixed together and next a binder is used. This will hold all the materials together and makes the molding process very easy. So, after the, the raw materials are mixed, they are molded or shaped. The shaping can be done either by manual or using um, mechanical methods. By applying pressure, the metal can be shaped into the desired form. Manual molding results in refractories of low strength and low density. But when mechanical pressure is applied, then the material has got high strength and very high density. After the refractory is molded into the desired shape, it is dried. Drying is the slow removal of moisture from the refractory. And once it is dried, next it is fired. That is, the material is subject to the high temperatures usually in kilns. This is done in order to stabilize and strengthen the material. The metal becomes very strong. It does not uh, break easily. Second, to remove the water of hydration which cannot be removed in this step. So, the water of hydration can be removed by firing. Then, to develop stable form of the final product. So, these are the three reasons why firing is done to the product. Next, we will see some important refractory bricks. The first one is alumina bricks, which are also called as fire clay bricks. These are acidic in nature and they contain more than or at least 50 percent of aluminum oxide. Next, we will see how these are manufactured. 
the first step involves the grinding of the raw materials bauxite silicon dioxide and calcium fire clay these are the starting materials for the manufacture of alumina bricks these are made into fine powder and next the powder is mixed homogeneously and water is added to make it into a paste next the paste is molded into the desired form using machines for pressing or a technique known as slip casting the next step involves drying of the material the material is dried slowly so the moisture is removed and next it is fired in kilns at a temperature ranging from 1200 degrees to 1400 degrees centigrade for 6 to 8 days when the final product is obtained we will see the properties of alumina bricks alumina bricks are acidic refractories these are not affected by acidic materials but they easily react with basic materials they possess low coefficient of expansion so they can be used as very good insulators the third property is that they are highly porous or they have high porosity and high temperature load bearing capacity or they got very good mechanical strength next they are chemically inert to gas like carbon dioxide hydrogen and natural gas so even at high temperatures these will not react with the alumina bricks and uh, the most advantageous properties they are stable to oxidizing and reducing conditions both conditions they are quite stable so they remain unaffected and uh, under uh, these conditions and <coughs> they got very good thermal spalling that is they don't break or they don't peel off at high temperatures and it is better than silica bricks alumina bricks find use in various industries depending upon the percentage of al2o3 bricks containing 50 to 60% of aluminum oxide are known as medium duty bricks and these are used as lining in cement rotary kilns in soaking pits hearths walls etc where these are subject to very high abrasion they can resist very high abrasion then high duty bricks they contain about 75% al2o3 and these have got very high um, temperature resistance and they used in the hottest zones in the cement rotary kilns also in brass melting reverberatory furnace in aluminum melting furnaces where the temperature is very high then the third class of aluminum bricks are known as fire clay refractories these find application mainly in steel industries the next refractory is magnesite bricks magnesite bricks mainly contain magnesium oxide we'll uh, see how this is manufactured calcium magnesite and caustic magnesia are the prime materials required for the manufacture these two are ground into very fine particles and mixed iron oxide or iron sulfide is added which acts as a binder next water is added and the material is made into a paste so that it will be very easy for molding the next step is the molding step here the molding of the material to the required shape is carried out using a machine next the material is dried slowly to remove moisture and then it is fired at a temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade for 8 hours after which the material is cooled slowly coming to the important properties we'll see the first property is it is basic in nature or it is a basic refractory next 
This can be used up to 2000 degree centigrade without load. With load it can be used up to a temperature of 1500 degree centigrade and the load being 3.5 kilogram per centimeter square. And it has got a very good resistance to basic slags. But uh, this combines easily with water and carbon dioxide. This is one disadvantage. Next property is it has got very good strength and it shows little shrinkage and a lot of thermal spalling. Its uh, resistance to abrasion is poor. Next we will see the uses. This is used where high temperature resistance to abrasion materials that is it should show good uh, resistance to uh, basic materials. Since this is a basic refractory it shows very good resistance and uh, this also find use in steel industries as lining of the basic converters and also in open hearth furnaces. And the last application is that it is also used in copper converters and reverberatory furnaces. The next refractory bricks we are going to see is zirconia bricks. They basically contain the metal zirconium. Zirconia bricks are manufactured starting from zirconite mineral which is ZrO2 with colloidal form of zirconia or alumina which acts as a binder. Next this uh, material is uh, subjected to all the prelim preliminary um, methods of grinding, mixing, molding and then it is heated to 1700 degrees centigrade after drying. Magnesium oxide or calcium oxide is added which acts as a stabilizer and strengthens the material. Next we will see the properties. Zirconia bricks are neutral refractories. Though it is a neutral refractory, it is affected by acidic slags. This can be used up to a temperature of 2000 degree centigrade without load and with a load of 3.5 kilograms per square centimeter, it can be used up to 1500 degree centigrade. It is also quite resistant to thermal shocks and uh, the thermal expansion is low. It finds application only where high temperature is maintained. Example, this high frequency electric furnace.